Hello my lovelies, how are you? I hope you're all well, hope everybody is okay. Uh, the sun is out, it has been raining today but the sun is back out now, in fact it's, there's a hell of a shadow going on over there at the moment. <laughs> um, I am a little dishevelled because I got very wet earlier for like, loading the van. We are all loaded and ready for Doncaster, I've got to pack a bag still, I've got to work out some clothes and stuff I'm going to wear uh, and do some packing after this but um, yeah, we're all good. Everything is, um, sorry, I'm still a little bit itchy. I've got some on my, uh, in my eyebrows that are doing my head in a little bit, but I do feel a little bit better today. Still a bit wiped out, but I do actually feel slightly more normal than I, I have done the last few days, which is good. Um, we have had lots and lots of you, um, take up the birthday challenges. Um, we've had, yeah, we've sold loads already. So if you do want to have a go at the birthday challenge, um, it's uh, they're live on the website. Uh, I'm gonna sneeze, excuse me. <laughs> That's good, me. <laughs> um, they're like they are on the website. There is a fabric one and there's a yarn one, so please do grab those. Um, because we have got limited amounts of them, so if you want to have a little go at them, grab, go for it, go for it because um, it's always so good. It's I love seeing what you well, we all do, the three of us, we love seeing what you guys come up with because you've got. You can make whatever you want, whatever you want with what's in that package. So um, please do have a little go if you fancy it. And the prizes are amazing. There's um, The People's Choice is uh, £100 or £150, I can't remember. There's a People's Choice, there's a Best in Show Fabric, Best in Show Yarn, and then there's um, Sarah, Sean and I's choice as well. So lots and lots of um, and your vouchers and all to be won. So um, <coughs> please do have a go. <laughs> and I've started talking and I'm coughing again. Oh, excuse me. Uh, hi, Natalie. Hi, Anne. Hi, Carolyn. Oh, yeah. Thanks, lovely. Yeah. It, um, yeah, slightly, slightly more normal today. Still not back up to strength. It wiped me out. Luckily, my, my uh, kids came over and helped us pack the van. So that was really nice. So uh, I wasn't too knackered. But yeah, still, uh, still not great. <laughs> but getting there, which is, is all good. Uh, hi Jackie, hi Helen, hi Liz, hello my darlings. Right, um, raffles on the website, birthday challenges are on the website, go take a look, okay? Um, and if you haven't signed up for the mini swap, that is also on our Facebook page and it's on the website as well. So you can you need to sign up on for the mini swap. <coughs> Me, normal, oh, as normal as I get, Carolyn. You, you know, as normal as I get. <laughs> Normal for me. <laughs> the sneeze get, oh, it is casting out the demons. It is. Oh, God. I must have a lot of demons in me the night I sneeze with my silly allergies, Patty. <laughs> um, but yeah, the challenges are on there, the raffles on there, and the mini swap form is on there. If you want to be involved in that as well, please do sign up for that. Okay. Hi, Jean. How are you, love? Right. We're going to crack straight on today with this little, little project um, after me chattering for a few minutes. So, <coughs> I wanted some boxes to hold my fat quarters because I've got lots of fat quarters that end up going into drawers or I use the IKEA, the Calyx units with the IKEA boxes and then I never see them. I never see them, I forget they're there. So what I wanted was some boxes that went on my shelves so that I can just like, oh yeah, I want that one and that one and that one. <coughs> oh, excuse me, asthma's playing me up. So um, I have did these and because I'm trying to get rid of scraps, I have bags and bags and bags of scraps. Let me take all this out a second so I can show you. Um, I didn't want to, well, I've used a, a bigger piece of fabric. I've used a fat quarter for, for the lining, but I wanted to use up my scraps and that's what I've done with this. Okay, this is what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna, it's like a crazy patchwork type thing. Okay, where I've used lots and lots of just tiny little pieces, you know, pieces that you don't really know that you, you, you're going to want, you know, what you're going to do with, and they just end up going in a bucket or they get thrown away into the textile recycling. Tiny, tiny little pieces like this. Okay, you can use as big or small pieces. You could do this as one piece if you wanted to. It could just be two pieces of fabric, but I'm all about using up my scraps at the minute. So, look, you can see there's a some random triangles off a half square triangle and all there. So that's what we're gonna we're gonna be doing. Uh, I am I am feeling a little bit better, thank you guys. So 
You can do this with interfacing and wadding, but because I wanted these to be sturdy enough to slide on and off the shelves, I've actually used some of this, the Pelmet interfacing, okay? Um, I cut a piece that was uh, 50, 15 inches wide by 20 inches long. You can vary this, it really doesn't matter, okay? And then I've cut out four inch pieces out of the corners, okay? Like that. I've done exactly the same out of a lining piece, okay? So this was a, a bit of a fat quarter and <coughs> I've cut a lining piece. You could make your lining scrappy as well if you wanted to. I just had this bit of gingham, I thought I'll use that for the insides. But what we're gonna do is, I, <laughs> I grabbed one, this is one of my scrap bags. I have about eight of these under my cabinets and it's just full of scraps. It's lots and lots and lots and lots of scraps, loads of it. So, oh, have I, am I frozen? Oh no, no, I'm not, there we go. Um, so I was like, this is ridiculous. Let's use up some scraps. Let's, you know, and they're pretty as well. Makes them a bit different. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of spray adhesive and just give this a light spray, okay? Just all over. Now, if you haven't got spray adhesive, you could do this with fusible interfacing. Um, and few, you know, and iron the pieces onto it and then put some wadding in there to get it bulky enough. But I'm using the Pelmet stuff because I wanted it to be quite stiff and some spray adhesive. And then we're just literally, so I'm going to grab a pile of scraps, okay, just a handful out, and we're just going to lie these on and we're going to cover this up and I'm going to lie it on in all different, different ways, okay. Um, you can, you don't need, you can overlap, I would overlap them just a little bit, you know, just by sort of an eighth of an inch. Oh, hang on. Oh no, that's, sorry, that's Sean. She did, I've probably forgotten that I'm doing a live. And then look, you can see I've got all these random little scrappy bits. I'm just going to stick these down, okay? You could do this with, um, I've got that one there. Um, I want a little sort of square bit to go in there. It doesn't matter if they overlap, I'm just sticking it down and I want to cover the whole surface. If you've got bits here that overlap, okay, you can use, you know, fabric glue, a bit of fabric glue or something. Might take a while to get through that bag. <laughs> that's one of many, love, that's the problem. A little bit of fabric glue on there, just stick it down. And we're just going to play around with this, okay, and just cover the whole piece to start with. Like I said, overlap just slightly. Okay, just a little bit. You just add a little bit of glue anywhere that I'm, you've got an overlap. Um, I've got a biggish piece there. That will go, there we go, that will actually fit in there like that. Just stick that down. You can add more spray adhesive if you want. You know, that's not sticking very well, so add a little bit more on there. Like that, just stick this down. We're going to cover it. We're just going to cover it. So, what do you guys do with your scraps? Are you crumb filters? Do you do mile a minute stuff? Oh, let's put that. How much can I get covered there? Yeah, let's just put that about there. Um, let's see, small you know, if this is a long piece, I want that to sit there. Just chop it off. Just you know, chop it off vaguely in the right sort of size. That needs a little bit more glue under there. There we go. Um, if they're a bit crumpled, just give them a quick, um, this is a quick make, make and lovely, yes, absolutely, yeah, it's, I, you know, keep our scraps because we're always convinced that we're going to do stuff with them, but do, do we, do we ever actually do anything with them? Okay, so that needs a little bit more glue under that one because I'm just overlapping there a weeny bit. There we go, I love this Roxanne stuff, I've been using it. For a little while now and it's really a really good adhesive you know, it doesn't stain the fabric at all which is fab um okay got a piece, funny piece there was that not kind of big enough to oh yes it is that'll go there so i'm just going to give that another little quick spray that's going to cover you just make it make it making sure you haven't got any any holes okay covering it all up and then if this is I just want to hold this in place. It's just a temporary adhesive for now. Is that going to be big enough for there? Not quite, so I need a slightly bigger piece. 
yeah, there we go, that will be. Give that a quick iron. So, uh, Claire, you make crazy quilt cushions embroidered uh, the joints with different stitches. That's exactly what we're going to be doing tonight, darling, is literally playing around with some stitches. So, get that one up to there. Need a little bit of, oh, where's my, where's that Roxanne gone? There it is. Check some on here. There we go. Like that. It doesn't matter that it's overhanging these corner bits at the minute. We're going to trim that off later. Uh, that doesn't want to stick just there. So I'm going to give that another little, little spray. Stick that down. You know, even if you've got skinny bits like this, let's add that one in there. You know, add in all these little bits that you think, I'm never going to use that. What am I going to use that for normally? So nice and nice way to use up these bits um it's oh there's a biggish bit there let that go hang on oh, can i put that one that one might that will cover that bit there there we go uh, it's covering up too much of that so let's pop that one in there like that so i'm just sort of auditioning them will that will that overlap there will that cover that it's quite nice to have some like funky angles going on um, Natalie, you've been playing with confetti quilts and so used a small amount of scraps, otherwise you keep getting the boxes there. <laughs> Jean, you've been similar process of making Japanese rice bags. Oh, nice. Um, a store, you store your scraps by colour. Yeah, that's a really good idea. One of these days, I will actually go through my scrap buckets and work out, you know, do the colour colours because it is, uh, it does work well, doesn't it? Um, that piece will go, will go in there. Just making sure I can't see any of the lining, which I can't. Get more glue on that one. Overlap that. It's just the little edges. Oh, hang on, that's not sticking there. Come on. Why doesn't that want to stick there? Oh, I should probably have rock sand that. Do, do. Oh, that one does not want to stick. Get in there. Why are you not sticking? My hands are a bit sticky now. <laughs> Get that one tucked in. There we go. Oh, come on. I need some of this on here. There we go. Sticking down. Oh, that little strip is determined it's not going to stay there. So I'm going to really glue that one down. Come on, the A. There we go. Like that. Um, still got some bits over here. So that one will go on there, just a little bit on that bit there, put that one in there, like that, um, what have I got here, it's a biggish piece but I don't need a biggish piece like that, I need a smaller piece, I just feel like it's a bit of a funny edge on that one so let me just chop that off. Will that go in there somewhere? Make that happen. Yes, there we go. That'll work like that. And like like all you can see, I'm just all kind of auditioning, going, will that fit in there? Yes, it will. Roxanne on that. Uh, Double-sided fusible foam stabiliser would be good for this project. We do sell it, absolutely. We sell the Bozor one. That would work brilliantly for this. Absolutely, yeah, yeah totally. I was just using stuff that I had in the house, to be honest. Um, you love this idea. You've got three bins of scraps. Oh, see? This, like Claire was saying, this doesn't have to be, um, uh, it doesn't have to be a basket. This method you could do directly onto wadding, and it could be a cushion front. It could be, uh, hang on, will that piece fit there? Yes, it will. There we go. Right. That little tiny, oh, actually, that's a little tiny strip. If I got a little strip or something, hang on. Here we go. Yeah, look, see how that skinny little strip is? I only need a skinny bit, so let's put that just there, like that. There we go. And then I've just got this last corner. I'm not overthinking it. I think that's, here we go, that piece will go in there. I, you know, if you start overthinking it and planning it too much, it can get, you kind of lose the joy of this. The whole point of this is it's supposed to be really <clears throat> as you can see that piece that I, those that i pulled out i've still got all of that i haven't even made a dent in that bag <laughs> not even a dent 
Um, it's been identified in the fabrics you're applying it. Absolutely, I kind of think, oh, I remember that one. Oh, I remember that one. Give it a bit of an iron now, okay? Just give it a bit of an iron. It'll just help it lie nice and flat, okay? Now, on the first one that I did, <coughs> I just zigzagged. And we're going to start by doing zigzags, but you can absolutely do decorative stitches on this as well. It is pretty, isn't it? It just looks so inviting because it's like proper scrappy, if <laughs> you saw what I mean. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim back some of this, okay? And I'm not going to, I'm not going to trim it too much. I'm just going to cut off a bit of the excess so I'm not, I can kind of see where the, the edges are. Okay, those bits go on back in the scrap bucket. They're big enough for another one. Right, let me just grab a rotary cutter and move it a bit easier. There we go. So let's just trim that off there. Trim it You kind of want to, you know, see roughly the shape that you're quilting. You're going to stitch into. So I'm just trimming off. I'm not being too fussy with it because. I'm going to trim it properly once I've stitched into it, but I just want some of that excess off so I can kind of, all of my, I mean, you could keep little pieces like this, I suppose. You know, if you're doing smaller baskets, I'll definitely keep the bigger pieces, but I would, I'd be getting rid of those now. Even I won't keep those. <laughs> there we go. Right. Uh, let's just oh, cut into this one as well. Just make sure that... And we've got rid of the majority of the excess. There we go. Okay, right. What I've got is something that looks like this now. Okay. We've got something that's a little bit crazy, patchworky, but looks cool. Uh, if you add a lid, it'd be great for wrapping presents. Do you put absolutely? Oh yeah, that would be nice. You could do you know, you could do this with like a shoe box. Use a shoe box as a template. That would work really nicely, wouldn't it? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it over to the machine and I'm going to stitch into this. Any line that I've got, a rough edge, any raw edge, needs stitching, okay? <clears throat> and like I said, with this original one, all I did was, like you can see this, it's just zigzag. I put a variegated thread in and I just zigzagged all the way, all the way over them, okay? Which you can absolutely do. I think it needs to be a zigzag rather than a straight stitch, but because I think you want to be able to hold it down a little bit more than just a straight stitch. Um, but I'm going to start with straight uh, zigzagging and then we can play with some um, different stitches. You know, you can add different colour threads, you could add bits of lace and stuff, but I don't think it needs it. They're, you know, the little st storage boxes. You could put decorative stitches on it, but we're going to start with just zigzagging. Okay, so we're going to go over to the machine, like this. Hopefully we're over here now. And I'm just going to choose my like a long length to start roughly in the middle. All right. Now I'm going to put a zigzag on and I'm going to go a little bit wider than normal. So I'm going to go about there, about four and a half. And I've got it set about one and a half, 1.2 as my stitch length. Okay. I've put a variegated thread in because it, you know, it's scrappy. It doesn't matter. Hello, Scout. What are you doing? I've got my sister Scout again. Okay. And then I'm just going to. I'm using the, the little line on the foot here to keep in line with that raw edge. I'm just going to zigzag away, okay? Just make sure that's tucked up there. And I've gone for a bit of a wider zigzag because you want to make sure you're catching all the sides of the fabric. If it starts to buckle a little bit, just stop and oh, like that bit there, tuck it underneath and away we go. Scout, there is nothing to eat in here, mate. You need to go. Okay. And when I get to this piece here, oh, I'm going to turn. Okay. And I'm going to go down this line here now. Oh, hang on. Camera just moved, didn't it? There we go. Sorry. It's because I moved it to try and get a better angle. And now it's gone a bit wonky. There we go. And then just zigzagging down any of the lights. But this would be a perfect opportunity to use your um, 
decorative stitches and then I can go down this one so it's got that kind of crazy patchwork feel okay and that one And then we're going to go down this one and I'm going to go back up, up that one later. You could, if you wanted to, always go end to end of a line. But I'm just kind of finding a path through and then going... Oh, hang on. Sorry, guys. The camera is being stupid. It's gone for a button. There we go. Hopefully that's up now. <laughs> okay. So my first bit and then I'm going to go down this one and it's as easy as this just zigzag you could do a satin stitch if you wanted to but that's a bit overkill you don't need to use that much thread um, so yeah so what else do you guys do with your scraps tell me uh, you've had some lovely fabrics in your scrap books from the packs in the last uh, week oh yeah they, I mean the scrap packs that we send out the majority of them are like the end of bolts which we can't get fat quarters or fat eights out of so we cut them up and chuck them in the scrap packs sometimes i'll take a bag of scraps from here and add those in as well you know it's they are very scrappy our scrap packs but that's the joy of them they'd be brilliant for this sort of thing your scrap packs are lovely. Ah, oh, fantastic. That's nice to hear, guys. Right, I'm just going to trim some of the, these threads off as I go. I'll get rid of that one there. And then I've got a line. Um, actually, that's a nice long one there. Let's do that one there. Sorry, you're going to have to put up with me for a little bit while I zigzag all this in. Okay. All the way down that one. It doesn't take very long. They, you know, it generally maybe like half an hour to make that other one you know i think it probably took me longer to find a bag of, not find a bag of scraps but decide which bag of scraps i was going to use <laughs> um let's have this long one here Ooh, but like i said i'm just zigzagging this one for time you could absolutely use just we, we've got all these decorative stitches and we never use them why not have a play and see what you've got Maybe we'll do that in a minute. I'll do some of the main ones and then we'll go back in and do some zigzag, uh, some decoratives. And I'm just finding, you know, long areas to, to work on. So that's a nice long one there. Let's go on this one here. And all I'm doing is just letting the needle do its own thing just concentrating on let's go down this way and then down this one uh, I'm just concentrating on keeping the edge of the fabric on that line that was the bit they didn't want to stay put earlier stay put now <laughs> use the zigzag pieces while they're together last night to use the gift bag absolutely absolutely um it's i frankenstein wadding all the time uh as a newbie to quilting you have no scraps yet also first time watching you oh hello lovely hi nice to uh nice you could join us um you soon will have oh you really will <laughs> margaret is right you will soon have scraps <laughs> Or if you want to do something like this, if this is something you think, oh, I fancy having a go off, buy a scrap pack. You've got loads in there as well then. You, you get, you've got a bit of every things you might not buy. You know. The other thing is, um, Sarah and I were talking to a customer today about it. She wanted to buy dressmaking fabrics and there isn't many places that you can now. Um, not around here by us. So we say in charity shops, go and buy old pillowcases and sheets from charity shops. You've got so much fabric in those um, and you get all sorts of different, you know, quirky prints and things. So, excuse me, this is a bit dull for you to watch me just zigzag for now. You have to keep talking to me just while I, I get, get through this bit <laughs> and then we'll make the, uh, actually make the basket. I wasn't prepping like four things. You've just got to put up with this bit. <laughs> okay. 
you we get. So going down that one. Um, what haven't I done yet? Oh, I haven't done this line here. So let's go down this line. I think with these, because you want these fabrics to be really well adhered to the, the pelmet interfacing, is I would zigzag everything and then go back in and do um, the decorative stitching if you want to do that. Uh, you could coordinate single kindly families per box and fill them with fat quellers that quarter. Patty, I love that idea. Oh, uh, yeah, that would be really good. So, like, your, all of this would be, like, blues and you'd only have, like, blue fat quarters in there. That would be a way... Or oh, blue scraps. Make these. So these are scrap baskets for your scraps and you could coordinate your scraps that way as well. Yeah, Patty, I love that idea. I've got a teeny tiny little tuck in there. I don't care. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Right, nearly there. I'm going to go down this one here. As you can see, these make up really quickly. And you don't need, I'm using this pelmet stuff because I had it and it's great, but you don't necessarily need it. You can absolutely do this with interfacing and wadding. Wadding, that would work too. Um, what haven't I done? This edge here, just keeping an eye on what I haven't done. There we go. So I'm going to zigzag. Oh no, back, one more. There we go, get to the end and we've all got a zigzag on our machines you know this is you know it's not something that we you can't do if you know if you've got a super duper machine or anything you you don't everyone's got a zigzag even on the most basic of machines you don't need to do decorative stitches but i love crazy patchwork i love it it kind of feels like the most traditional form of patchwork in a way doesn't it it's that kind of idea of using every last little scrap up and then i've got one more line down here to do there we go so down there like that i think that's all of them scrap christmas fabrics would make a nice one. Oh, wouldn't it Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Right, I'm just going to come back over to the overhead a second so I can trim um, trim these bits off. Um, wouldn't that be nice if you were making like a little hamper or something as a Christmas present? You could make a, a basket like this with all different Christmas fabrics and then fill it with like people's favourite goodies, you know, like, you know, nice teas and some chocolates and some snacks and things. Okay, so I've just zigzagged every single raw edge, okay? We could now, if we wanted to, add in some decorative stitches, which should we just have a little go at that just so you can see. So I'm going to maybe on this white here, I'm going to add a little decorative because this will be an edge of the top edge of the box. I might add a little decorative stitch in. You can go as crazy or as not crazy as you want with these. OK, so I'm just going to add a little decorative stitch in just for the hell of it. Um, you could embroider you know you could embroider on it you could put you know blue or red if you were doing that colored thing so let's choose a decorative stitch um one of those oh god there's so many on here let's have a little look uh, oh there's some pretty little daisies there let's just have a little go i'm going to keep the edge of the foot here against that line so i've got a rough guide i'm going to stitch out some daisies now i've still got that variegated thread in so, hand stitching is nice. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, you could do some long stitching and stuff on these. I've never hand stitched on the pelmet. Has anybody hand stitched on pelmet um, interfacing before? There we go. I love using the decorative stitches. I never ever do that, use them, or very rarely. So it's quite nice to have an excuse to do so, isn't it? to the end there okay so, favorite stitch of decoration oh long stitching yeah absolutely there we go oh sorry my phone's going off there we go so I, can you see i've just added a little decorative flower stitch along there i probably would have done that in all navy maybe because you lose it on the white but you can then play around with these you have it stabilizes everything yeah <laughs> um it really is this this stuff is great this pelmet stuff 
Um, I haven't used it a lot, but for this sort of thing, it's it's fantastic because um, it's really stiff, so it holds everything in place. So play around with your decorative stitches. You know, have a little go at just chucking some fabrics on, stitching in. I'm just going to trim this up neatly now. So again, you've got to bear with me a second because I'm going to use the edge of the helmet to just trim off anything that shouldn't be there. So it's nice and neat, ready for stitching. So let me go up that one. And a smaller ruler would have helped, wouldn't it? <laughs> just me to pick the biggest one that I've got there. Here's my scissors. Let's get, let's snip that one. Oh, it did snip off. There we go. And all the way down that one. Now that. And all the way down that side. And I'm just lining up the edge of the ruler with the pelmet interfacing. Okay. There we go. So, yeah, like I said, we're all packed up ready for Doncaster. We will be heading up there very early in the morning. Nice, bright and early. Sarah did. Sarah Jane did groan quite a bit when I said what time I was going to be picking her up. But it's a good four-hour drive for us, so we uh, we do need to start have an early start. Otherwise, we are not going to be um, set up in time. And I'm just going to use the last little corner here, and then we can start actually putting this whole thing together. Okay, nearly there. Um, done. Okay, so that's going to be the outer of my box all right like i said you can do more if you want well, well, what was the original well. size um of the rectangle i cut tw uh 15 by 20 on mine and i cut four inch so uh squares out of the corner but you can make them any size you like you know they could be bigger smaller whatever so next thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch up these corners we're going to box these corners so i'm going to pull this one up to here like that and line up those edges and I want the clips, which have gone vanished again. There they are. Finding clips much easier with pelmet than pins. So I'm going to pop a clip in there, and I'm going to stitch down here. Okay, and we're going to do that on all four corners. Will you be going to the Newcastle quilt show? Yes, we are lovely. Absolutely, we're going to Newcastle. It's the first first time they've ever done one there. So I'm just going to change back to my straight stitch. I'm using edge of foot because you want these to be sturdy-ish, okay? So sort of three-eighths of an inch seam allowance. Um, yes, we are going to Newcastle, Pam. We will be there. Uh, that's in October. So um, we will. are you going to come? Will we see you there? Please do come and say hello if you are. Okay, so I've just stitched down three-eighths of an inch on that one, and I'm going to do that the same on all the corners, okay? So you've got to manipulate it a weeny bit like that make sure you lock off you could do a quarter of an inch on this but i think because it's a box it needs a bit of a stronger seam allowance see you there ah oh, amazing andy you're still exhausted from festive quilts you don't know how you do it i don't know how we do it either we are we are quite knackered to be honest and we're just going into our busy busy season sort of september through to November is the sort of busiest time for shows and for the shop and everything. So, so yeah, there we go. And then last one is like that. Oh, you do have to kind of manipulate this a little bit because it is quite stiff and you've got to get your fingers under there. There we go, and back stitch. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to kill me, send help. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to Newcastle, Sharni. You get to do Cowbridge. You have your own bed at night. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'm not going to turn this inside out. Okay, you can see it started to make that box shape. But what I've done is I've cut a line in, which is exactly the same. So this was 15 by 20. Okay, and then I cut three and a, uh, sorry, not three and a half, four inch out of here. Okay, if what size square you cut out depends on how wide uh, how tall they end up so if you cut little tiny squares you'll have like more of a tray they'll only be you know that sort of high and it will be low and flat if you cut bigger squares it'll be taller like a vase okay so could you use a normal needle with interface and yeah i've just got a bog standard needle on there lovely 
Um, I just obviously use your needle for your thread. So I use um, uh, size 80 needles because I use Orofil. So yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna do exactly the same with the lining. I'm gonna box all four corners, okay? Man up. <laughs> the other thing I'm gonna do with the lining is, is I'm gonna do a slightly bigger seam allowance, okay? We do this for linings with bags and stuff. If it's very slightly smaller, the lining, it sits in really nice and tight. So, um, <coughs> where I did three eight, like edge of foot, you know, you've got your little um, lines on your plate. I'm just going to knock it over an eighth of an inch. So it's going to be just tiny, tiny bit smaller. It won't affect it sitting into the basket, but it will make the lining not, not be baggy. Uh, what's happening in Cowbridge? Um, Cowbridge quilters have a exhibition happening. It's in October. We will put the details on our website. Um, Sean and I will be going to Newcastle and Sarah will be doing a um, pop-up shop at um, the Cowbridge Quilters exhibition um, which um, yeah we'll let you know Claire because you're you're local to us aren't you so um, it'll be a nice one for you to go visit. We are at Ponty Patches uh, next weekend so we're Doncaster this weekend and then Ponty Patches um, next weekend uh 6th and 7th they've got a beautiful exhibition up there and we're going to be traders there so if you are in the Abercunnan area or Cardiff and you fancy a little trip out uh we're going to be up there okay all the way down <coughs> somebody already asked but could you use bozel instead of... absolutely you could use bozel for this it would work work perfectly for this just something that a little bit more than wadding if you want to use wadding, if you've got scraps of wadding, use some heavyweight fusible interfacing first and then wad it up. Um, or bosal um, rather than the pelmet. But either of those will be make it stiff enough that it stands up. There we go. Right. Okay, so of me, is that all four? Yes, it is. Are tickets still available for Don Casting? Yes, I believe so. If you go on line now onto the Grosvenor Show website. It's called Grosvenor Shows. Go onto their website. You should still be able to get tickets for Doncaster. Okay. Right. And remember our if you are in the area, our group quilt, if you're part of that, is going to be in that show as well. So I've done exactly the same but with a slightly bigger seam allowance on there. This one I'm going to turn right side out. Like that. And we're going to put this so it's right sides to right sides inside here, okay, like that. So we'll shove it in, and what we want to do is just line up those corners. And again, use some clips with this, it's much easier. Okay, so I'm lining up the corners first, there. Line up that corner. <coughs> Could you put both exhibitions on the website? Yes, we will do, lovely, absolutely, we'll put both. Um, Sean normally puts it on our own website and our Facebook page um, where we're going. I think it's like on the road, so we will get we'll get both of. I'll make sure that it goes on for you. Um, you're about ten miles outside of Doncaster, so I might have a trip on Sunday. Ah, oh, lovely! Yeah, please do come say hello, Karen. Um, right, once I've kind of got the corners in, can you see that it's just slightly smaller than that? But you want that. You want to you want to ease that in a little bit. So it's really nice tight fit and you don't get the lining's not quite as baggy then so, more clips lots and lots of clips on this One there. now because i'm using the pelmet and when i'm going to pull it through it does not like to be pulled through because it's so stiff you need to leave a really big gap what's that about about a six or seven inch turning gap Okay, if you're using bosal um, or if you're using wadding in a normal fusible interfacing, you can get away with a smaller gap. But with the pelmet, you need a big gap. Okay, you really do because it just won't pull through, <laughs> as I found out earlier. It just doesn't pull through otherwise. <coughs> Let me just put that right in the corner. <coughs> right, okay. I'm going to now stitch all the way around the top and leave this big gap here. Okay, this it feels like a ginormous turning gap but you really do need need it for the pelmet okay it just won't go through otherwise 
Are you going to do another group quilt? Yes, I am. Absolutely. I am working on the idea at the moment. Um, I've, I've had a little bit of inspiration. Um, I think I know what we're going to be doing. Um, we'll probably do it through, because I want to put it into Malvern Quilt Show. So <coughs> I'll probably do it end. Sorry, excuse me. My chest is really tight. <coughs> my asthma is really bad at the moment. It makes my chest tight when I'm talking. Um, I've taken the table off um, so that I can get this under easier. Um, towards the middle to end of October, I'm going to be doing a live with uh, with it so that um, you can we can we can get going on the next group quilt. Right. Um, I've got to get this under here now. Okay, now I found it easy with the pelmet to stitch it from the inside because I could manipulate manipulate it better. Okay, so I'm going to start about there. Make sure I back stitch, lock stitch, and you're going to stitch up to the corner on this very first bit. Okay, it just anchored it. Now what I'm doing is I'm stitching to the corner, but I'm not going to flip it and go all the way around. I'm going to stop just here okay so oh i was going to stop back stitch there right i know this seems feels seems odd but this just worked easier earlier just start that first bit on the inside it held that in place so that <laughs> nothing moved and then go to the outside all right so this is my big turning gap I found that when I was doing it all from the outside, the line moved a little bit. So by doing that first little bit of stitching, it just stopped it, everything moving too much. What I'm looking for is my seam line here. Okay, and I'm going to stitch to that seam line. This again is only if you're using this pelmet. If you're using wadding, you can just go all the way around. But this does not like to go around the corners. Maybe you might know a way of doing it, but I found it just didn't like going through the corners and I'm going to push that seam that way and I'm going to start right on the seam there and I can stitch all the way along then and that little bit of stitching that I did right back at the beginning is just holding that down it was so much easier I want to come up towards it is awkward it doesn't like to be forced under a machine this pelmet stuff but that's what's keeping it stiff I suppose I've come up to that seam line and then back stitch. Could you trim corners? Yes, you could. You could get rid of some of this fabric here, but you kind of want that because that's holding it upright. You know, you that that thickness there is what's holding holding your box upright. So under there like that. There we go. Make oh, and I'll make sure that's back in place. Lock stitch, and away we go again. And it doesn't matter if you rock, you scrunch this up, okay? It does hold its shape. It goes back in shape. So don't worry about trying to keep it pristine. You don't need to, you know, it really doesn't matter. There we go. Ooh, that lining's moved just a weeny bit. It's warped a bit, but never mind. Come on, get under there. There we go. Last little side. Oh gosh, this is a really long one. I'm sorry, guys. I'm talking for ages. And down this side. But I know you guys like to see a completed project. So this is where I've already stitched. This is where I started on the inside. It just, it just helped. I don't know why, it just did. There we go. So that's there. And I don't need to do that last little bit because I'd already done that at the beginning, but there's my big turning gap there. So we're nearly done, I promise. If you're not chatter a chatterbox like me, <laughs> you'd have been done by now. Big hole like that and you've got to get it through. Oh, sorry, big hole, there we go. We're back over here now, hopefully. Are we over here? Come back, there we go. <laughs> so there's my turning gap. You've got to get all this through, okay? And it doesn't like it very much, but it didn't hurt it, okay? You're not going to, you know, by screwing up this pelmet stuff, it's not going to hurt it. I worried that I was going to lose all my shape and stuff. So, but it, it, it didn't. It pulled back through. So, 
okay and then get those corners out so i'm gonna put my in fact if you want a nice big gap you should get your hand in there as well which is good <laughs> and get my finger into that corner there into the corner there and it is and I don't know if you can see this, I'm trying to hold it to the camera, I'm trying to find that, there it is, there's the corner, push that corner out, and because it is the pelmet stuff, <laughs> you can be quite rough with it, which is quite nice, you don't have to worry too much about putting your finger through anything, there we go, okay, and then kind of roll that seam as well, those, those corner seams, uh, I think the dog is destroying the bin at the moment, it sounds distinctly like he's destroying the bin. You can see he's got his nose in there and he's pulling it all apart. Okay, and then if you kind of do this, squish it down, that'll be the base. And then shove all this inside. Now, the lining is going to want to sit like that, but then that makes it too short. So you're going to have to iron it. Okay, so you're going to have to get your finger in there and pull that, pull that round. Come on, there we go. So, I, so the seam is right on the top, okay, like that. Sorry. Oh, there's no kids around either <laughs> to, to sort the dog out. And when you kind of pull that seam around, iron it, okay, like that. Put some, give it a good iron. Scare, what are you doing, mate? Oh, I think he's pulled the whole bin apart. God knows what he's eating. There we go. Like that, all the way around. Put your clips in as you go, okay? Just to hold that down and keep that seam right at the top. And then this is where we've got the turning gap and this is kind of a bit more fiddly. But again, once you've done a couple, it makes life a bit easier. And get this, let's slide this in here. Go and check. <laughs> Hopefully not the scrap bin. Fabric wrestling should be in the big small. <laughs> Yes, it should, Andy. I'd be re I'd buy my get a gold. <laughs> I will go and I will go and check in a minute. The kids have all gone up. All the kids have gone upstairs. They're all gaming, and the dog has been left to its own devices. And that scout is a bugger for the bin. It really is. I meant to put it up before we started. Right. So where this turning gap is, okay. You just want to fold this. Go along and fold that helmet over and if you kind of squeeze it make yourself a natural seam as you're going along like that and again with your lining like that oh, I'm sure that's well time because I've been going on for ages we need to hurry this one up there we go like that there we go okay now it still looks a bit of a mess at the moment but what you're going to do now, I'm not going to do that now because I'm worried about what the dog's doing. Your dog hides your mail. <laughs> Got to love a cheeky pup sometimes. You do, oh, don't worry, love. Honestly, it's fine. I will, I'll check in a minute. All I did then is you're just going to top stitch all the way around, which closes up that gap like that. He is, I can hear him. Like that. Can you see? I've just top stitched all the way around like that. It closes up the gap and then give it a good press. Now, don't use your little tiny mini iron for this. Get, get your big iron, you want a bit of weight behind this with the pelmet, and really, really give it a press, okay? Once you've done that top stitching, press that into shape, and you can go back and kind of crease in, you can almost crease in that base as well. You don't need to, it does kind of hold, it becomes that shape anyway, but give it a really, really good press with a bit of, bit of weight okay which is what what i did i put got my big iron out and the big you know proper ironing board so i could really press into it and everything okay there we go so all like that and there's your little box done and that one all i've got i will do it off, but i'll do it off camera is i've just got top stitch round and then give it a good press and then you can load it up with whatever you want you can put your threads in it you can get your sprays in it and they just look really nice on your shelf and it's all really done out of scraps and, I, and you can have a play with your stitches okay 
Uh, hi Carol, how are you love? Oh you forgot, you've been making binding, uh, hang on, come in over here, you've been making binding for your quilts long all afternoon, you've got a husband to measure and you're 65 inches short, oh bless you, oh well I hopefully, has he had the whole bin out? Yeah. yeah, one of the boys has just come down, he's had the whole bin out, little rat bag, we'll sort that out, <laughs> but yeah, um, well hopefully you can make some more binding lovely, fabulous, so go and make some scrappy baskets, it's really fun, really, really a lot quicker than I've made it because I've been chattering. Um, play around with your decorative stitches. I I really like these. I think they'd be they'd be great for like you know in your kids' grandkids' room, you know, with you know on shelves so they can keep like Lego and all that sort of things. I like um, Claire's idea of making another one slightly bigger so that I can't quite do it because they're both the same size, but they'd be a lid. You could make lidded ones, couldn't you? Which would be really cute. They'd be nice on windowsills with, um, as a present, with like some potted herbs or something. You know, it protects the windowsill, but would look really pretty, you know? Just a cute little idea. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. Sorry it was so long. I'm going to go and rescue my kitchen. <laughs> See whatever mess he's made out there. Um, we will do some lives from Doncaster over the next uh, few days. So we're there Friday, Saturday and Sunday for the show. So we will do some lives from there and uh, show you the quilts and who's there and all the rest of it. You know, our usual nonsense. Uh, and then we will be back here Tuesday and Wednesday, possibly Thursday as well. We have got to go and set up for Ponty Patches on Thursday at some point, but I don't know what time we're going to be doing that. So, But definitely see you back here on Tuesday. Uh, post photos of the kitchen. <laughs> Alex is um, Alex is already cleaning it up. And naughty scout, come here, come here, come on. Well, you're too fat, aren't you, to get up here? Because you eat everything. You can come up, come here. Come say hello to the lady. This is naughty scout. Can you say? Can you say hello? No. He's a beagle. He eats everything. He's the naughtiest boy in the world. But we do love him. <laughs> right. Take care, my darlings. Speak to you soon. Bye.